I'm Nicky Campbell. Welcome to The Big Questions. Great to see you. Tomorrow, three Muslim terrorists will be sentenced for plotting to blow up seven transatlantic planes. Who knows how many innocent people would have been killed? Our first big question, does Islam encourage violence? This MP says that Islamic extremism has a real problem with violent adherence. Christian groups think there's too much hanky-panky on our screens and it's corrupting young people. Our next big question, is there too much sex on TV? This Christian campaigner says it encourages casual sex amongst teenagers. And as the party conference season gets underway, has religion any place in politics? We're back at Ashton Park School in Bristol with a, a very lively and intelligent West Country audience waiting to play their part. And sitting on high this morning for you, we have got uh, the Imam and member of the Muslim Council of Britain, Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra, director of the Centre for Social Cohesion, Douglas Murray, and the novelist and religious commentator, Christina Adone. <laughs> Friday marked the 8th anniversary of 9-11, eight years ago, when nearly 3,000 people were killed and more than 6,000 were injured by Islamist terrorist attacks. In the years since, we've had bombings in Bali, Madrid, London, Mumbai, to name just a few, and they've murdered uh, over 2,000 more. Does Islam encourage violence? That is our first big question. Farouk, from the Bristol Muslim Cultural Society, we hear all the time that Islam is a religion of peace. What is it in the faith that, that encourages some of his adherents to think that they have got a license to kill? Uh, nothing. It's ignorance. Um, it's nothing to do with the faith at all. It's the fact that you know the West is in Muslim countries at the moment bombing the living daylights out of innocent people, and that is inspiring these people. They're giving, it's giving them a cause. It's giving them a reason to rebel. So it's totally politics. Much of it is to do with politics. That's where the trigger point, that's the crisis point. Um, and if, if we continue to associate Islam and say Islam is a just cause here, Islam is a justifying factor, then we're way off the mark. Then we'll not be able to tackle the issue. But Farouk, haven't, they got, plenty, haven't they got plenty to go on in the scriptures? I mean, it would be kind of difficult to launch a jihad for Jesus, wouldn't it, if you looked at the New Testament? But well, no, got, actually, you can talk can about the Christian army in Africa doing exactly the same thing. But that was maybe politics. Can, can, I, can I quote this? I, I will. So is this. Yeah, OK. But, but haven't they got some justification when they read things in the Quran which says, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them. I mean, it's not love thy neighbor, is it? No, I mean, though that particular verse isn't, but that's not uh, a general Islamic quote. That's a specific quote to a specific point in a specific time, in, 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 a, in a specific battle. Muslims were outcast, exiled, left their homes for nine years, persecuted for nine years, found sanctuary in a new homeland, were migrated, an exodus from Mecca, migrated. Still, still the enemies of Islam came to them and wanted to wipe them out. At that point, there is a point in Islam. Islam is not a pacifist religion by any stretch, I agree. But there is a point. You, you continue to turn the other cheek. Yes, it's a continuation of the same message that Jesus brought. Turn the other cheek up to a up point. Up to a point, yes. Up to a point. You cannot just stand by and watch evil spread throughout the land and do nothing about it. Like this morning. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the di one of the big differences, isn't it, between uh, Islam and Christianity. I mean, uh, Christ says, uh, you know, how, he's asked how many times do I forgive uh, my brother, he says seven times to seventy times seven, I, an infinite number of times. We have to address. I have to say, it's always same, a very difficult the same question. Applies, it's always the same a difficult question to I address. I also this quote one. from the Bible where Jesus says, yeah. "I have come not to spread peace, but I have come Absolute, to there is, bring the sword." There is, there is I've one come particular to turn chapter. Brother against the father. Yes, there is one chapter. I want to turn this into a relation about uh, okay, for it, in a minute, Christian yeah. and Islam. There is indeed a verse in the New Testament that says that. The thing is that we have to address at some point. It's always very awkward to do so. We have to address the nature of the inventors of these religions. Uh, Jesus, uh, when he invents Christianity, says all sorts of peaceable things, and on that occasion says, uh, says um, yes, I've come to bring a sword. Uh, but Muhammad, um, when he invented Islam, uh, also gave an example to Muslims. Now, we're very fortunate, of course, that most Muslims don't follow that example or are unaware of that example, but the fact is that Muhammad himself was a warrior. He beheaded prisoners. Uh, he himself was a very violent man. Uh, we can't... <laughs> Now, I would say, and many, many people who are Muslims, uh, and many of my Muslim friends and colleagues and so on, realize that, you know, Islam gives you, like all religions, a guide to life. 
but we cannot ignore the violence of Islam's tenets, of the faith itself. When, uh, when Muhammad very early on I in his career... I follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, myself, on a, in a day-to-day -day life. I don't go around beheading people. No. I do that because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, acted in a certain way. I give charity. I give uh, uh, talk to my neighbours. I reach out my hand to the elderly. I reach out sure. my hand to the poor. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying that what I'm saying is that we, cannot, we, can, we can recognize the good things within Islam, the peaceable things in Islam. We cannot pretend that the verses that are violent and the violent doings of Muhammad did not occur because they did. John Azuma, John Azuma, you're a theologian. Yeah. I, I think that we have to be very honest and very real here because uh, to deny that there are violent verses in the Quran is really just uh, being plain. Escapism. I'm not there are violent verses in, in any book. Quran. There's there are violent verses in War and Peace. Just, just, just one second. Just, let me, just in, let in, me what, in War and what? In War and Peace. I mean, there's violent verses. But that's fiction. That's not. The, that's, but, not the word, that's not the word of God. Well, but just, just, just let me finish the point. And I'm saying there are violent verses in the Quran. But I also know there are millions of Muslims who read the same verses and do not go out blowing themselves up. Because but let, that's let, the let point. Me just let Please let him finish. Let me finish the point. I think the problem is hermeneutics. Is interpretation. And different Muslims interpret this differently. You may decide to interpret it differently, but there are other Muslims who take it very seriously, and we cannot sit here and say your interpretation is right and they are wrong. We this, can, this we can do that. Lens is Ibrahim? Wrong. We can, we can say that that interpretation is wrong. And I totally disagree with Douglas when he says uh, what he said about the blessed messenger Muhammad. He was a, a man of peace. A billion people or more follow his example. We are what we he are because of, battles, of that. Though, didn't he? Of course, which which uh, leader? A which leader of a any community that is a growing community that is a community under attack from time to time will not uh, have to resort Jesus. To, to, to to a military campaign? Why do we not look at the fact that? The verses of the Quran, which are being misused by misguided Muslims, and we don't deny that. They are Muslims, just as they are. We, we've had Christian people, we've had Jewish people, we've had all kinds of people who have misused, misused their scripture to justify something. We need to shift the discussion to say, can I ask you one thing? what is, if I can just finish this point, Nikki, mm. is it really the religion, or is it the people who follow those religions who mm. have political motives, or they have criminal intentions? <laughs> And if, this is the, if this is the dictated word of God, why did he go on 